Hello and uh, cordially welcome to the webinar Kutsi Soft PLC Systems on Standard Platforms. My name is Roland Wagner and I'm responsible for the product marketing of 3 Smart Software Solutions and I'm happy to have you here for this webinar. At first steps we want to have a short overview on the presentation. So in the next 30-35 minutes I will give you a first step, a brief introduction into Codesys. Then we'll see on which different device platforms our applications may run. And then we'll take a closer look to three special platforms for standard Codesys soft PCs. So now let's start with a brief introduction. You all know Codesys, the IEC 611.31 platform with its editors like the letter diagram or CFC or structured text. But the most interesting question is where will this code that you have programmed be executed? Because if we have here now an overview on the different parts of the products of codes, we are always working right in here on the programming PC where we do our engineering. So this means all our visualization all our safety, field bus, motion part is somehow configured and programmed up here in that programming PC. Where will it be executed? For this case, let's take another look. We have to execute this software product on another level, on the controller level. So therefore, there are special different control platforms available where these application codes are executed. Now let's take a closer look which possibilities we have for these different device platforms. For this purpose I have prepared a kind of table for you. And the first step we see that there is the, the, the classic case. You purchase a PLC from a manufacturer. So this means you choose the right performance class, the right field of application, and there is a help for you to find the right PLC out of the Codesys compatible PLCs. Uh, online you will find the so-called Codesys device directory, and I have prepared that here. Codesys device directory, so the short link for it is codesys.net. Then you will be redirected to our website, and here you have a selection of over 500 different products, and you can filter them according to your application, according to the type of device you want to select and according to different technical features. So this is the classic step. You will purchase the device from the manufacturer which has already integrated every part of the code software in it and which will support you completely for this product including the code's development system. Comparatively new is a second platform. In this case, the device, so the hardware platform on the one hand, and the software are sold and supported separately. So we will talk about that in a minute. So therefore we go to the third case. You can take just your workstation PC as a platform, and especially in order to test your application code. Because with every installation of the Codesys development system, there will be the soft PLC Codesys control win with soft real-time properties installed, which enables you to test your application. This variant has different numerous advantages compared to the integrated simulation, because you can really work on a soft PLC. It's not just a simulated soft pills. So this is the third option. The fourth option is something we will again discuss a little bit later on and there will be a live demonstration. There are right now some soft PLCs for low-cost boards on the market available. So such embedded boards could be used for tinkering, for, for making some um, home automation applications. But again this will be part of the discussion in a few minutes. So let's come to the fifth platform. You could choose an industrial PC with Windows. 
And there is a soft PLC in the code store, which you can just download and install on such a PC. And again, this will be discussed in a few minutes. So this, these are the three different cases. We will discuss a little bit more in detail. But there are still some more options. The sixth option is for you in case you are a device manufacturer, but you don't want to focus on the software implementation of the code source part, then it's possible to purchase system on chips, so CPU chips modules which have the code source control runtime system already included. So this means you can focus on the custom part of your device, like own housing, own IOs, own interfaces and external things you want to integrate in your controller. So this means you do not need to care about the integration of the software part for the code to soft PLC. So this solution is perfectly for perfectly suited for low quantity device series. In case you want to have several products, then you have, have of course the choice to create your own custom controller. This means you select the CPU platform and you have all freedom of platforms concerning the development system for that CPU the form factor, the functionality interfaces and so on. But again, there is a high effort necessary to develop such a self-developed controller. Therefore, it's for serial products. Now, these are the seven different platforms you could choose in general in order to execute the application code that you have programmed inside the code system development system. Now, as promised, we will focus now on these three different platforms in order to give you some additional information on that. Because for these three different platforms, we have ready-to-use standard soft PLCs in the code to store. The first case we want to take a closer look to, you could now choose for standard controllers from automation providers such as Vargo or Beckhoff. And for these devices, you will find a soft PLC, a standard soft PLC in the code to store. So perhaps you know that both Vago and Beckhoff have derivatives of code available. So they are, of course, very really solid and uh, for industrial purposes, but they are not programmable in this case with the standard code development system. Therefore, we have implemented the standard code soft PLC in cooperation with these companies in order to make them available for these devices. The criteria to choose these devices, and perhaps in the future some more, is that these devices are per default not programmable with standard codes on the one hand, and on the other hand, that the soft PC is exclusively available in the codes store. As we are already in preparation for some further platforms, and in the future we will find more soft PCs for such standard devices. Now, how is it possible to make such a device programmable with standard codes? The procedure looks like this. You have to purchase the device from the manufacturer and to download the codes package from the, from the codes store. In case you take the codes development system as a browser, you can immediately install that package into the development system and there are some options to install the soft PLC on the device. At that step, the technical part is already done. Um, in order to have the commercial parts done too, you need to purchase the soft PLC license from the code store and store the license on the device so that the license is no more or that the device is no more running in a kind of um, demo mode, but sorry, trial mode, but in a full version mode which is running 24 hours, 365 days per year. How this looks like, looks like we will see in a minute. There are some properties out of this platform. <clears throat> the first step, as already mentioned, with the standard soft PLC, the device will be programmable with standard code development system. So you don't need any derivative, but you can download the free tool from the code store or from the code website. Furthermore, the latest soft PLC is always available for these devices. This means you can immediately update and benefit from the latest product features. 
Furthermore, the software support is directly realized by 3 s Smart Software Solutions, so it's really a split up of hardware and software, so therefore, as well, the software support, support for the soft PLC is realized by us. The big advantage is that you immediately benefit from product properties from the CodeSys portfolio, such as field bus systems, visualization, and OPC OA server, which are part of that soft PLC, so you don't need to install additional options or you don't need to deal with the device manufacturer about these options. And furthermore, these soft PLC systems support the add-ons from the CodeSys store. So they are extensible. This means that the development system, the CodeSys development system, could now be enhanced by special plugins, for example, the CodeSys profiler, a profiling tool for measuring the application time of the application, or the static analysis, or test manager, or UML, or even connections to ePlan or other third-party tools. Furthermore, with the soft PLC, you may have licensing on the device. Some of the options are not licensed per workstation, but per device. And this is, as well, of course, supported with our soft PLC systems. So this was the first option with that standard soft PLC. Let's go to the second part. It's for makers, which means there's a soft PLC available for low-cost platforms and embedded ports boards such as the Raspberry Pi. So the soft PLC is called CodeSys Control for Raspberry Pi SL. By the way, you will find that SL several times behind such a product name. It's a kind of uh, abbreviation. It shows you that this is a single license, which means that the license is a single license per device. So all the products you will find with that extension SL will show you that there is a licensing per device. Now let's talk about that Raspberry Pi, which is very, very well known in the market. There are about more than 4 million devices sold around, and even with coaches on board, there are lots of such devices already in use. It's ideal for tinkering, for makers, and for home automation. Due to the hardware properties of that device, we cannot really recommended for the use in industrial applications. But there's another board available since two weeks. It's the Beedlebone Black. It's somehow similar to the Raspberry Pi, but a little bit more industrial. So with some special housing or some special I.O. interfacing, you could as well use it for industrial applications. But for home automation or for tinkering, we have some suggestions. For example, we have here realized as a kind of uh, study, a three-dimensional printer by means of that Raspberry Pi. Or here you see that there's a quadcopter flying, which was built up just by very simple elements and controlled by the CODES um, runtime system, as well with the Raspberry Pi, this small tree pod, this mechanical dog, all of them, they were realized by means of the CODES runtime system. And there's the third part I just wanted to mention. In case you want to realize your control application by means of a real industrial PC, you will find two different soft PLCs in the CodeSys store, CodeSys Control Win and CodeSys Control RTE. Now, where the difference is, CodeSys Control Win realizes the real-time behavior by means of the Windows um, user mode, and therefore it's not a real hard time a hard real-time property that we can realize with that. But it's ideal for low time-critical communication tasks, and it's, it's powerful nevertheless. And in case you reduce the effects and the applications, additional running on that industrial PC, you could eventually even realize some real-time applications. But for hard real-time properties, we have the RTE. Then we have realized a Windows patch in the kernel mode. So there we have uh, jitter below one millisecond. Typically, it's within the microseconds. There are extensive features available for that soft PLCs, 
have, have of course, the full support of the Kutsu store, have almost all supported field bus interfaces included, such as Profinet, EtherCAD, even an IP scanner, an adapter, even Circus is supported, and some other things can, for example, can open. And you can extend the functionality by motion and visualization packages, so you can make such a PC to a motion controller or even to a CNC or a body controller, or by switching a panel to it, could be a, a panel PLC. The performance of the device is scalable via the IPC properties, so the faster the device is running, the higher the performance is, and of course, the more memory you plug in, the bigger the applications could be. And in case you want to extend it yourself, there is a SDK, a software developer kit available for it, so you can really make your own shared memory drivers, for example, I.O. drivers for special I.O. cards or something like that. Now let's stop the presentation right now. I want to show you now in a live mode how to realize such a device or how to turn such a device into a Kutsus compatible controller. Here next to my computer, I have a BeagleBone black board and it's connected to my computer via USB. And I want to turn this board into a Codesys compatible PLC. So which steps do I need to take? The first step, you see here that I have already a small project opened and I have already chosen that Codesys control for BeagleBone Black and there is a question mark in front of it. So this means there is something missing, yeah? so it will not work. So in order to prepare my Codesys development system for that, device, I need to go to the Kutsu store, and you see that icon here, you go there, click on it, and then you will see that there is Kutsu's control for BeagleBone Black just as the first product, it's brand new, therefore it's in the top position, in case you won't find it here, you can go to systems, and there we will find all the soft PLC systems Kutsus Control for BeagleBone, for PFC 200, Raspberry Pi, Kutsus Control RTE, and so on. Now let's go to this. And as soon as I'm logged in or, yeah, with my account into the Kutsus store, I can download that package. By the way, how can I do that? In case you use the standard browser, you need, of course, to uh, log in. Or in case you use Codesys as a browser, you can as well save these data into the Codesys settings. Now I register. Then I can download that option. Of course, I get the license agreements. I accept them and then the whole thing is downloaded and installed. Take the typical setup. In this case, there are all, or this dialog, all profiles for Codesys are shown as the BeagleBorn Black needs the service pack 9 of Codesys version 3.5. I can just um, select those other service pack 8 profiles and then everything is installed on my Codesys development system. This takes a minute. And after <coughs> this installation has completely run through, I need to shut down Codesys and start it again. I will tell you in a minute why this is necessary. So you see, in order to, for some components to become effective, you must restart the application. The first step, we can check in the so-called Codesys package manager whether the Codesys control for BeetleBone SL was installed. Yes, it is. It's installed right now. Okay, so I can close that. And as I already mentioned, I need to close Codesys and to restart it again. Codesys version 3 is a modular system which is linked during the startup time. It's based on .NET, realized in C-sharp. 
So during startup, all the different components and modules are linked together. Now, we have, with the code speedy bone package, installed a new component, which is then available, but not yet linked into the executable of that development system. Therefore, I need to shut down that code development system, restart it again, and then all options are available. Now let's start the same project as before. And then the device should be available and then everything should be prepared for turning the BeagleBone Black into a CodeSys compatible controller. Okay, you see here this question mark has disappeared. Very good. The next step we need to do is to install the runtime system on the board. Now I told you that my board is connected via USB. You see there is a new option, a new component here installed, Update BeagleBone Black. So it shows me which package is available. Now it's that 3.590, which I just downloaded and installed. And there is some login data necessary and an IP address, but of course I can scan my network in order to find out which device or which devices are available. In this case, it's just this one here with the IP address 192.168.72. And I know this is the right one. How do I know that? In order to show you that, I go to the PDF of the first steps document, which you can as well download from the Codes store. We're getting started. And there is a description which preparatory work has to be done. And yeah, if the BeagleBone Black is connected with the USB cable, then the default IP address is exactly this one which we have seen. So please go through all this documentation in order to, to uh, execute the right steps. Now I have scanned it. I have entered the right password, user root. No password necessary. Okay, this works. And I start the update process. You see down here in the status line that the device is connected now and that the new runtime system is downloaded and installed on the BeagleBone Black board. So again, this takes a minute. And after it has finished, you get a nice message. Okay, finished. We go to the message window and see, okay, update finished. So this tells me that there is a runtime system installed. In order to use it right now, I have to shut down the BeagleBone and to power it up again. So this again will take some seconds because on that BeagleBone blackboard, there's a Debian Linux installed, which is working with a standard file system and therefore this takes some, some seconds in order to have it powered up. But as soon as, as it will be ready, we can um, build up the connection. The first step, we go to the devices dialog and see that we have the communication settings here. So we are here on the PC and we have already the connection to the Codes gateway server ready. Now the next step we need to do is to scan the network in order to find the device. Let's see whether it's already available. Here it is. And then I can select it. Now in this case it's very easy because there's just one such bigger bone found. In a real network there could be multiple. Now how to find out which is the right one. There's a nice feature we have realized in Cruises. Perhaps you already wondered why this wink button is uh, available. Unfortunately, so far it's not available for all CodeSys compatible controllers so far, but for the BeagleBone or for the uh, PFC 200 it's available and as soon as I click on it, the um, LEDs on the BeagleBone Black will show a certain pattern and pattern, therefore I will know, okay, this is the right one which I now select. Okay, so we built up the connections, you see the green buttons right now and this tells me that my application could be downloaded right now. And I do that. I will download it <coughs> to the device. So it's compiled by the integrated compilers. And it's downloaded to the controller. 
you see that down here again in the status line. So the application is in stop mode. Perhaps we open the only PUU here. And as soon as we start that application, it will run. In this case, nothing really serious works, but we could, for example, change something in here. And then here there is a counter counted up, and you see that the four least significant bits of that counter are pushed here to these different variables. You see that in my application, I have additionally a visualization object. Let's go to this. Oops, we oops, put the code for it below. So you can see that I can switch up for on or off that switch here and see the visualization, which is, of course, realized by, the in, by means of the integrated visualization editor. OK. Looks quite good, so it's working. Let's take a little bit more features into account. You see here that the visualization manager has a web visualization below, so we can show this visualization as well in a web visualization. I have already prepared the link for that web visualization in here. You see we have the same optics, we can switch it as well in the web visualization, and this is as well properly working. By the way, for those of you who have already worked with the code as web visualization, there's just one thing I wanted to mention, which is a little bit special for the Beetlebone Black. Usually the IP channel for the web visualization is 8080. For the Beetlebone Black, this is 9090, because the 8080 is already uh, taken by the integrated Beetlebone Org uh, web server, which is as well integrated on that board. So just uh, be aware of this little difference. OK. One more feature I want to show you is OPC UA. You see that I have had I've here in my application a so-called symbol configuration in which I have all these variables exported to an OPC UA server. So my settings here include the OPC UA features. Therefore, I show you by means of a simple OPC UA client how this works. So just add the server here, select the prepared server from my list, connect it, and you see the browser succeeded. So I see the whole image all the objects of the controller, which resources, applications, programs, PLC, PLG, and you see, you see there are all these variables available, and we can just push it, push them to that PCUA client, and then we have the same information as before available. Now, well, we could take the web visualization, for example, and switch here this for to false. And you see immediately this works. Or to go the other way around, um, we go here, double click on it, press return, and then it's switched off. OK, you see, as well, OPC A is perfectly working. Now let's go one step further. We can add here, of course, the general purpose inputs and outputs. So we can plug in a device, double click on it, and then receive immediately the I.O. mapping of these general purpose inputs and outputs. We can go to the mapping, mapping register cards and map them to variables, for example, of the application, or even configure and declare new variables directly here in this editor. One more thing I want to show you. My Beetlebone Black, as it is connected, have connected via USB, has the Ethernet port open. Therefore, I have connected the Ethernet port with an EtherCAT device. Now I want to configure that device. I go to the device itself, add the device, add the field bus master. And you see that there's now EtherCAT master available in here. 
which of course needs to be connected to the right Ethernet port. Therefore, I double click on that, browse the available port, and see that there's one Ethernet port available here. The other one is an I.O. and an USB port, so I check the Ethernet port, and then I can download the Ethercat stack. So my configuration has changed, therefore, there has to be a new compile and download of the application, which is now a little bit longer, as the Ethercat stack being prepared as a code library is now implicitly called and executed and downloaded to the device. As soon as the stack is available here, I can scan for devices on my Ethercat bus, and you see there's just one fixed bus coupler, coupler and an I.O. device, or two I.O. devices, one for inputs and one for outputs, and then just copy all these devices into my project tree. Then I can log in and execute the application once again, run it, and then as well my bus will be executed. Okay, let's start that application again. And you see we have here the green running symbols. And uh, if you open such a output device, we can go to the mapping and then either manually set some outputs or in case we connect them to the variables, have that outputs directly coming from the application. Okay, let's log in. In this case, we can use an online change because we have not changed the configuration. And then only the changes are executed. Oh. Why are they not shown? Okay, I don't know. Oh, because my visualization has switched the counter off, but in this case it works. So you see that even either cat is properly and very easily working with that big ball black. Now there's one thing missing. We have said that with the download of the package from the Kutz store, we have installed all necessary parts of the development system and even the runtime system, but we need to as well install the license. Of course, you can directly go here and uh, purchase a license by adding it to the cart. If, in case you do so, you receive a so-called ticket, which is a 20 digits number, and which enables you to install that license on the controller. And I want to show you that too. How can we do so? We go to the device, go to the PLC settings, and there's here a button, edit licenses. If we click on it, the available licenses on the controller are read out, and we see there's already a license available here. Nevertheless, I want to show you how to install such a license. I go to the button Install Licenses here. Activate license. So here I can now insert my ticket number. In this case, I have already prepared the ticket in the so-called repository, it's a kind of database for such tickets. You see in my ticket there are five licenses for the BD Bone Black available. And I could choose another one, select it, and install it on the controller. Of course, this doesn't make sense in this case because why should I have two licenses on the same device? But nevertheless, this will, this will work. Okay. In this case, I get an error because the license already available. This makes sense. Okay. Good. Now we have seen everything which is necessary in order to turn a Beagle Bone Black into a Kutz's compatible controller. Let's go back to the presentation. Where are the typical application examples for such soft PLC platforms? Of course, for the Raspberry Pi and for the Beagle Bone Black, it's training and teaching because it's low cost and you have an extensive range of functions. But you could as well use these boards for home automation or for hobby applications, again, because they're very cheap and they're expandable concerning their functionality. 
Another application example is to use these boards as evaluation for evaluation purposes or for performance studies or even as marketing tools because you could put them in a kind of black box and show your customers, in case you are a device manufacturer, how your future controller could work, how it could look like concerning the programmability, concerning the performance you could reach with it. Or in case you are, for example, a machine builder, you could check the performance of your application code before you choose for the right controller because there's a very cheap reference platform you can see how this will work on this device and in case you find out that this is much too slow then you know that there is a higher performance controller necessary or if you see there's plenty of performance available then perhaps you could choose for a slower one or cheaper one. And of course you could make industrial applications out of it in case you take the beauty bone black or you take these industrial device platforms at the PFC 200 from Vago or the Beckhoff industrial PCs. Or you take any other industrial PC with which you, on which you install the Codesys Control RTE SL soft PC. However you do, it's up to you which platform you choose. You've seen that there are different platforms available concerning your demand and you have complete control what you want to take. In case you take those three platforms we have shown a little bit more in detail. You see, you've seen that it's quite easy to integrate the soft PLC on it. In any case you have customization possibilities by add-on tools from the Codes store but the programming tool itself, the Codes development system is remaining the same you can just switch between the different platforms by means of the device descriptions. So therefore you can realize compatible application code for many possible applications. Therefore I'm at the end of this webinar. I thank you for your attention. So bye-bye.